days will come on. But happy Monday. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, let's see here. Looks like we are live on Facebook. Happy Monday morning to all of my Facebook friends. And of course, I have my ladies on the line this morning as we prepare ourselves for Monday morning manna and prayer. Another Monday has come upon us and I'm glad about it. I know you guys are too. I know you're glad about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 We give God glory for that. Um, we're just going to, we just a few, one more minute here and um, we'll get started. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook Live. I'm broadcasting from Kimberly Jones Global, which is where I will be doing most of my uh, broadcasting from moving forward. So we're just trying to get in the groove of that um, so that people will get used to uh, logging on to Kimberly Jones Global. And if you're not already um, a part of the page or have liked the page, please do so that once I come on, you'll be able to get the notifications, okay? So I am so glad that you all are on this morning. So glad you're on this morning. And let's see here. Let's try something here. Hold tight. Good morning. Good morning. As you're coming in on Facebook, do me a favor and share out the broadcast. I know some people may be looking for me this morning on my uh, regular timeline, but I'm not there. <laughs> um, so if you could do me a favor and share this out uh, with all of your friends this morning and try to find our find our crew this morning that would be wonderful that would be wonderful and i'm gonna go on and also share it on my kimberly jones page As you're coming just in, in case hold on a moment share out the broadcast i know some people we'll get it together here in a sec Good morning to all of you who are coming on. I don't see who's on. Um, I can't see names yet on Facebook Live, but if you guys could just um, just post your names up there, that would be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I am going to share this on my other page, and we'll get. Oh, there you are, Sandra. How are you? God bless you. Good to see you on. Who else is on there? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to share this out here. So as you guys know, for those of you who are who are regulars, you know, there we go. You know that we come on. Hey, is it Tanya or Tanya? Hey, Tanya. <laughs> God bless you. So good to see you on. You and Sandra. And there's, there's Pastor Jasmine. Good morning, darling. Good to see you on this morning. Um, so glad you guys are here. If you could do me a favor, go on and share out the broadcast. We are live, of course on Kimberly Jones Global. And also we are live on our prayer line this morning where we have some of the, the women of God logged on there. Um, some of the ladies from the 21 day um, from pandemic to purpose. Some of my ladies are on in there. We had a 21 day 
um, boot camp and they are still connected and I give God glory for that and for them being on this morning and for all of you that are on this morning um, good morning to you Adrian good to see you on as well and so um, for those of you who may not know me you may be watching live right now or you might watch my replay my name is Kimberly Jones and I am a co-pastor in the Atlanta area at Prevailing Love Worship and Deliverance Center um, where I co-pastor with my husband, Apostle Louis D. Jones Jr. We've been pastoring there for 18 years. This weekend marked our 18th year of ministry, and we're excited about that. In addition to that, we're also out here on social media sharing the Word of God, encouraging God's people to live on purpose and make every day count um, through my coaching business, Living on Purpose Life and Empowerment Coaching, where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching. I certify individuals who also want to coach people into their destinies. And um, I'm an author and I just love all things Jesus, okay? All things Jesus. And we get on every Monday morning. Good morning, Tina. How are you? We get on every Monday morning um, to start our week off together with a word from God in addition to uh, praying together. So uh, you can catch me on here early in the morning on Monday mornings just to uh, connect with the people of God to again get our week off to an amazing start. So if you are ready for an amazing start to your week, you are absolutely positively in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. So thank you so much for uh, joining this morning. Again, we will be broadcasting doing most of our work, most of our ministry from Kimberly Jones Global. So please like, 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 and share so others can like right along with you, okay? Good morning, Valicia. Good to see you on. So glad you guys are here. Don't forget to share out the broadcast. So we're here for Monday Morning Manna. We're going to jump into the word this morning. Again, thank you for joining. Uh, there's my friend Cece. Good morning to you. God bless you. So glad that you're on. And as you guys know, um, when we come on on Monday mornings, we love to read the word, to get into the word, take some time to read several scriptures in order to set up uh, the thing that God is going to share or speak to us um, as a part of our our meal, our morning meal, our morning manna, okay? So if you will so kindly go with me to the book of uh, Matthew, the 14th chapter. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Uh, we're going to read from there several verses of scripture as we uh, prepare to, um, to feast on the word of God this morning, okay? I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so glad that you're up early. Early. And for those of you who are not in the uh, Eastern Standard Time Zone, you are up really, really early. So God bless you. And I tell you, it's going to be worth it. Okay. So let's go to Matthew, the 14th chapter. We're going to start at the 22nd verse. Okay. Let's read that. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Good morning, Danita. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him 
and said unto him, O thou little faith, where didst thou doubt? Where didst thou doubt? And that's the question I want to ask each and every one of you, whether you are listening on the conference line or you're logged in uh, to Facebook Live this morning. Good morning, Shante. The question for each and every one of you is, wherefore did thou doubt? Okay? Why did you doubt? That's the way the Amplified puts it. Why did you doubt? And so, listen, here we have this story. We have the account of the disciples in Jesus, and Jesus constrains them to get into the ship to go before him to the other side. Now, that's really, really, really important that we note that the Bible says that Jesus constrained them to get into the ship to go before him unto the other side. As he sent, as he sent, as he sent the, hold on a second, as he sent the disciples before him, as he sent the as he sent the disciples before him, um, he went away to pray. And he says, um, the Bible says that he sent them before him. Before him, And so we're going to go back to that. But the thought that I want to, I want to present to you this morning is that this is going to be a water walking week. This is going to be a water walking week. Can somebody type that? Can those of you who are on the conference line, can you make that declaration this morning that this is going to be, or this is, because we're already in the week, this is going to be a water walking week. Good morning, Janice. How are you, darling? Good to see you on. And so as you guys see, those of you that are on Facebook Live, I have on my I Am a Water Walker t-shirt this morning because I wanted to remind you, I wanted you to hear this really, really good. I wanted you to get a visual so that as you're making this declaration that this is going to be a water walking week, that it will resonate, not just, come on, not just in your hearing, not just in your ears, but in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul. We said earlier that this prayer call, that this Facebook Live positions us for an amazing week. And the word of the Lord for this week is that it's going to be a water walking week. And now I need you all to say this, I am a water walking. Walker, can you decree that? Can we just put a declaration um, out into the atmosphere early this morning? Can we let hell know that we are water walkers? Come on, somebody. Can we let hell know? Come on. And can we announce with heaven that we are water walkers? And if we want to be, and if we're decreeing and declaring that we are water walkers this week, and that this is going to be a water walking week, we got to make sure that we clear out the doubt. And so just like Jesus said to Peter, where did you doubt? This morning, as we go through these verses of scripture, I want you to ask yourself, is there any doubt anywhere? Is there anywhere that my faith is failing? Have I left any gaps or any holes for unbelief, come on, or doubt or hesitation or intimidation to creep in my life? Or can I boldly say that I am a water walker and this is going to be a water walking week without any reservations? And so when we look back to Matthew chapter 14 and the verses of scripture that we read this morning, what we find is that Jesus told the disciples to get in the ship. He told them to go to the other side. He told them to go before him. So the first thing that I want you to know this morning, as you are decreeing and declaring that you are a water walker, and this is going to be a water walking week, I want you to decree and declare that Jesus has gone before you. Come on, you need to get that in your mind right now. Because let me tell you, when you begin to make bold declarations like I'm a water walker and this is going to be a water walking week, let me tell you, it's going to stir some things up in your atmosphere. But if you remember the fact, and I want you to remember this, that Jesus has gone, listen, he sent them, he sent them before him, but guess what? He had already gone before him, before them. And I say that 
because any assignment that Jesus sends us on, he's gone before, come on, and even when we cannot see him, even when we cannot feel him, even when we cannot touch him, after a while, we're going to recognize that he has gone before us, okay? He has gone before us because he's going to show up in a way that's going to signify that the place that we're going, he has already tread, come on, on that same place. He's already walked on that same water. He's already gone to places and made spaces for us to be able to make it through the storms that we might face even in this week. So this is gonna be a water walking week. He told the disciples to go before him, but in all actuality, when the storms begin to rage, come on, when the water begins to be boisterous, what do they see? They see Jesus walking on the water. And so anywhere that God is sending you this week, I want you to get this. Anything that God is telling you to do this week, come on. Anything that he's assigned for you, he is not going to send you to a place where he will not meet you. Come on. He is not going to send you to a place that he will not meet you. For the Bible tells us that there is nowhere that we can go that we will escape the presence of God. If we go up to heaven, he's there. If we make our bed in hell, he's there. And so anywhere that God has gone, uh, that God has sent us, he has gone before us. We know he told the, he told the, the disciples to go before him. But when we find them in the midst of the water, when we find them in the midst of the storm, Storm. Guess guess who's there? Guess who is there? Jesus is there. Jesus shows up. And so I want you to remember this as you are going and preparing yourself for this week, that there is not a place or a space that you are going that Jesus will not meet you. He will not meet you. As a matter of fact, we know that he is an omnipresent God. And so he is everywhere at all times. Come on. And there is nothing that takes him by surprise. There is nothing that takes him by surprise. And so whatever it is that you have to do this week, whatever your assignment is this week, God has already gone before you. And even though sometimes it seems like you're out there all by yourself, all alone, it seems like the storms begin to rage. You have to keep in mind that God has really gone before you and he's going to show up and meet you in that place and in that space that he has called you to. And so he sent them, he sent them before him and he went and he prayed. When the storms began to rage, the Bible says that it was about the fourth watch. It was the fourth watch. And that means it was somewhere between um, three and six o'clock, right? It was between three and six o'clock. And we know we're right in the middle of the fourth watch when we come on for Monday morning manna. And I believe that it's all prophetic in nature because just like Jesus spoke to them in during the fourth watch, I believe that this morning during the fourth watch that Jesus is also speaking to those of you that are watching, that this this word is for you. This word is going to carry you through this week. This word is an indication that God has not left you. And any assignment that's on your life, you're going to be able to complete it. You're going to be able to do things that you've never done before. You're going to be able to accomplish things that you've never accomplished before. Why? Because God is with you. Somebody type that. Somebody say that. God is with you me. And so one thing that's for sure, one thing that's for sure, if you are a water walker and you are decreeing and declaring that this is a water walking week, there are some things that you have to come into agreement with. Okay. There are some things that you have to align yourself with. And so the very first thing that I want to share with you, that I want to challenge you to align yourself with is that if you want to be a water walker, as it is aligned with this verse of scripture, you you must be in the boat. You must be in the boat. Somebody say it. Somebody decree it. I'm getting in the boat. I'm, I'm in the boat right now. Listen, in order to be a water walker and to have that experience like Peter and the rest of the disciples had, you got to get in the ship. 
You got to get in that place. You got to get in that place that's going to take you to that moment in that space and time where you'll have this God encounter. But if we never get in the ship, then we never position ourselves to walk on water. So we have to get in the ship. And I don't know what that means for you. I don't know what that means as far as positioning. There may be something that God has been unctioning you to do. There may be a challenge. There may be an assignment. Um, there may be um, something in your business, in your ministry, in your family. There may be an area um, that you have not uh, uh, engaged in before. It's something out of the norm. It's something that's going to cause you to get out of your comfort zone. And so if you want to do something great for God and you want to walk on water, then you must come up out of your comfort zone. You must get in the boat. And so I don't know what that boat is for you all, but you know, you know, the thing that God has been ministering to you, you know, the thing that has been intimidating to you, you know, the thing that you have been procrastinating, come on, the thing that you've been putting off this week is the week for you to get in the boat. And so I like the way that you guys are decreeing and declaring that you're going to get in the boat. Okay. Now. There has to be, and when you get in the boat, when you get in the boat, you position yourself in a way that requires you to walk on water. It's going to require you to walk on water because Peter, once he was in the boat with the other disciples and the storms began to rage, he was like, listen, listen, when Jesus came and they were afraid, listen, they were afraid of the, 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 the storms. They were afraid of the sea and they were afraid of Jesus. One thing that we have to put out of the boat when we get in the boat is we got to put fear out. We got to put fear out. And so not only do you have to get in the boat, but you have to bring that fear under subjection to the authority and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to decree and declare right where you are this morning that you're in the boat, but fear has to get out. And so when you get in the boat, fear has to go. So Peter, Peter was the one disciple that was in the ship that saw Jesus walking on water. And he says to Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come to you. And so many times what we do when we want something miraculous in our lives, when we want to see God do something that we haven't seen him do before, what do we do? We want God to come to us. We want to stay where we are. We want all the miracles, signs, and wonders to align with our comfort zone and, and with things that we're used to. But if we want God to do something that we've never seen him do before, we have to do something and position ourselves in a way that we have not positioned ourselves before. And so Peter understood it. He understood that, yes, in order to get to Jesus, he had to be in the boat, but to go to the next level. And, and in order to walk on water, he had to come out of the boat. And so here we go again. It's another level. And so the first move was to come off of the land into the ship, right? And that was one level of obedience and one level of movement. But now that Peter finds himself out in the storms and in the waves and in, in the seas, now there's a call and a requirement for him to go to another level and come out of the boat. Come on, somebody, to come out of the boat and to walk on water. Because Peter said to Jesus, if it's you, bid me come to you. And many of us want to sit in our comfort zone. We want to stay in the place, come on, where we've always been. We want to do the same thing we've always done. But can I tell you that in this season that we're in, that it's going to require uh, multiple transitions. It's going to require us to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. It's going to require, require us to come off the land into the boat. We're going to get out in the seas. We're going to get out in the storms and it's going to require another level of faith. You see, you see, getting in the ship required a level of obedience, but stepping out of that boat like Peter did required yet another level of obedience. And so this is what I hear the Lord saying is that even in this week, that there's going to be some things that he requires of you all that are going to, um, it's going to cost you something. It's going to be a risk. You cannot walk on water without taking a risk. You cannot walk on water without taking a risk. So the first thing we know is that we have to get in the boat, right? The second thing we know is that we have to cast out fear. The third thing we know is that we have to be willing to take a risk. 
Somebody needs to write these things down. The first thing, I'll go over it again. The first thing is that we have to get in the boat, right? The second thing is that we have to cast out fear. The third thing is that we have to, come on, be willing to take a risk. What are you willing to risk in order to walk on water? What are you willing to risk? Are you willing to risk your comfort? Are you willing to risk coming out from among, come on, the crowd? Because there were more people that were in the boat than were outside of the boat. And what and what we tend to do as people of God is we tend to stay close to the crowd. But there are many of you that are listening this morning that will that are listening on the conference line. And the thing that God has called you to do is going to require you to come out from among them. It's going to require you to do something different. It's going to require you to be a trailblazer. It's going to require you, come on, in the midst of everything seeming topsy-turvy, it's going to require you to step out in the midst of it. Have you ever been in the middle of something, right in the middle of something? You're not on the land anymore, and you haven't quite made it to the other side, but you find yourself, Bishop, good morning, but you find yourself in the middle, and you have to make some decisions right in the middle of it. There are many of you that are watching this morning and you're finding yourself in the middle of something. You said yes to God. You got in the boat, but you did not factor in the storms that would begin to rage as you were making your journey from one place to the next, from one level to the next, from one level of faith to the next level of faith. Come on. You did not factor it in, but guess who did factor it in? And this is, this is what I was telling you to start with, is that that place where God is taking you, he already knows every storm that's going to crop up. He knows everything that you're going to face. He knows every challenge that you're going to come up against. So even in this week, we stand right here at uh, on Monday morning, even in this week, there will be some things in the middle of the week that come up that take you by surprise. But you have to remember that God has gone before you and that even though it's a surprise for you, it's not a surprise for him. Come on. That's the only way you can be a water walker if you understand that there is nothing that we go through. There is nothing that we face that Jesus has not done and that Jesus has not already conquered. Come on. He is he was tempted in all ways. Come on. There, there's no there there's nothing that we face. There's no temptation that we face. He was tempted in all ways, in all manner, and he didn't sin. And so when Jesus was out there walking on water and he told Peter to come to him, let me tell you, he was setting the example like he always does. And so in the middle of whatever it is that you might find yourself in this week or even in right now, you got to believe and trust that God has already gone before you and he has already made a way. And so let's go back over our list. We got to remember, first of all, we got to get in the boat. The second thing we got to remember is that we got to cast out fear. The third thing that we got to remember what is that we got to take a risk. We got to take a risk. We got to be willing to take a risk. And number four, we cannot panic in the middle of it. We cannot panic in the middle of it. I'm trying to set y'all up for something for this week. Somebody is going to get blessed beyond measure. Somebody's socks are going to be blessed completely off. But you have to have behavior that's conducive to your walking on water. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be anything that you've seen anybody else do. You're going to have to come out from among the crowd. Come on. You're going to have to sometimes be a long ranger. Sometimes you're going to have to set the pace because I can guarantee you that the other disciples that were still in the boat we're looking at Peter and there are some people that are looking at you and they want to see what you're going to do. They want to see how you handle the storm. They want to see whether or not you're going to turn back. Come on. And so this week, if we're decreeing and declaring that this is a water walking week, there are some things that we have to remember. We have to, we have to, we have to um, get our thinking right. We got to get our thoughts right. We got to get our faith in the right place. We got to make sure that there's no doubt and unbelief. And the last thing that I want to tell you before we go into prayer is that we must 
keep our focus. That's probably the most important thing. We must keep our focus. Let's go over our things again. And y'all help me remember. The first thing is that we must get in the boat. The second thing is that we must cast out fear. The third thing is that we must, come on, we must take a risk. The fourth thing is that we can't panic in the middle of it. The fifth thing is, is that we may have to, come on, come out from among them and do it alone and do it alone. And the and the sixth thing is that we must keep our focus. Come on, these are steps. Come on, some of y'all are going to have opportunities this week. You're going to go places, you're going to get opportunities, doors are going to be presented to you. And if you're going to if you're going to do anything great for the kingdom, you must keep your focus. Why do I say that? I say that because when we find that Peter did all the right things, didn't he? He, he made sure that it was God. He made sure it was Jesus. He says, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And that's important when we're walking on water. Is this water that Jesus, come on, has told you to walk in? That he's told you to walk on. Did he tell you to come? Did he tell it tell you that it's your moment? Did he tell you that it's your hour? You cannot be afraid. When you know that you have heard the voice of God and he tells you to come, you got to be willing to go, right? And so when we hear God's voice, then we know for sure it's him and we got to be willing to go. And then when we know that it's him, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we cannot lose focus. The Bible says that... Um, and, and Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Peter started walking on the water. He came out of the ship and he started walking on water. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. When he saw the winds, when he felt the pressure, when he, when, he, when, he, when he began to realize, come on, it's almost as if Peter came to himself and said, what am I doing? What am I doing now? And I believe that Peter started questioning himself and he started doubting himself. And he started saying, what am I doing out here on this water? I'm not supposed to be out here. Hey, how you doing, Pastor Ron? God bless you. I'm not supposed to be out here. I'm not supposed to be walking on water. Hey, Lordy, I love you. I'm not supposed to be walking on water. Nobody has ever walked on water before. I've never seen anybody walk on water. It defies nature. It defies gravity. And when we begin to get in the middle of what it is that God has called us to do, and we start looking at all of the things in the natural, what begins to happen is we allow doubt to come in. We allow fear to come in. We allow all of our insecurities to come in. And we begin to depend on ourselves more than we depend on God. And if we're going to do some water walking this week, we got to keep our focus. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Come on. Somebody decree and declare, I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Come on, just say it. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. That the thing that God has called me to do, I'm going to do it this week. If I have to do it afraid, I'm going to do it afraid. If I have to do it alone, I'm going to do it alone. If I have to take a risk, I'm going to take the risk. Come on, somebody. If I have to put fear under my feet, I'm going to put fear under my feet. And above all, if I have to keep my focus, I'm going to keep my focus. I'm not going to allow the things that I see, the things that I feel. And for some of you that are watching this morning and listening, listen, you're going to come up against some challenges that any other time you would allow it just to just to knock you out of your knock you out off your game and out of your spot. But this week you're not. Somebody say I'm going I'm going to maintain my position this week. I'm going to maintain my position this week. Any other time you'd give up, you'd be frustrated. Um, you'd begin to say, I don't, I don't have what it takes. You begin to doubt yourself and doubt God, but not this week. I don't know who this word is for. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're going to face this week, but what I do know is that there's a blessing in it. And if you keep your focus, if you call on the name of Jesus, even if you feel yourself sinking a little bit, call on the name of Jesus, because you know that he's there with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's the one that told you to get out of the boat. And that's the thing that we have to remember. When Jesus calls us into a place, no matter how unimaginable it is, no matter how risky it is, 
Oh my goodness, this is blessing me right here. I don't know if it's blessing anybody else. But no matter how unlikely it seems, if Jesus calls you to it, the only option is for it to work. The only option for you is to walk. Come on. Somebody said the only option for me is to walk on water this week. So no matter what's coming up, I'm going to maintain my position. I'm going to keep my focus. I'm going to keep on walking. Come on. Good morning, Angela. How are you, darling? I'm not going to allow what I see to deter me from what I know. From what I know. Did you guys get that? Did you guys get those points this morning? I see Valencia wrote them down for us. She typed them. If you didn't get them, look at that. Look at her comment there. And she put all of the all of the notes from other steps that we talked about or the points that we talked about this morning. And so I don't know who this is for, but somebody is going to walk on water. And I'm, I'm going to say it's me. I'm going to de decree and declare. And can we do that before we go into prayer this morning? I'm going to decree and declare that I'm going to walk on water this morning. This week, I'm going to walk on water this week and that just like Jesus met them at the fourth watch, he is meeting us at the fourth watch and he is bidding us. Everybody that's on this broadcast this morning. Good morning, Monica. He is bidding us to come to him. That means that we're getting out of our comfort zones. We're moving forward. We're aligning ourselves with the will of God. And we're going to see the miraculous. We're going to see the miraculous. And the reason we know we can walk on water this week is because we have done it. Because God has given us the okay. He's given us the green light to step out of that boat and to walk on water. So I want you guys go in and decree with me just one more time. I decree that this is a water walking week. And I decree that I am a water walker. This is a water walking week and I am a water walker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you guys for being on this morning. Let's go into prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray. Come on. I want you to press in this morning. I want you to begin to open up your mouth. I want you to make this declaration loud and clear. I want you to say that I am a water walker. I want you to say this is going to be my best week ever. I want you to say doors are opening for me right now. I want you to say fear will not grip me. Fear will not keep me out of the promises of God. I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to try something that I've never tried before. I'm going to get something that I've never gotten before. Come on. I'm going to see God's grace and favor released in my life. I'm going to see God keep me afloat in those areas where the enemy thought that I would drown. Come on. I'm going to walk on that thing that thought it was going to consume me. Come on. Whatever your declarations need to be this morning, I want you to make those loud and clear. I want you to say them boldly. Good morning, sis. How you doing? Elder Mammy, God bless you. I'm going to do things I've never done before. I'm going to attain heights that I've never attained before. I'm going higher than I've ever gone. Come on. Begin to decree and declare those things. Begin to set the atmosphere. Begin to set the tone for this week because this is going to be a water walking week. This is going to be a week that God releases the miraculous in your life. And you're going to be able to do things that you've never done before. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we give you glory and honor today. We magnify you, God. We exalt you today. We extol you today. We lift up your name, oh God. We give you glory and honor and praise. We release the fruit of our lips this morning. We give you that sacrifice, oh God. We thank you, God. We, we, we worship you. We adore you. Come on, just begin to love on the Father this morning. Father, you are worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. There is none like you, oh God. We thank you, Father, for giving us life this morning. We thank you for giving us health this morning. We thank you for strength this morning. We thank you, God, for shaking us out of our sleep this morning. God, we give you glory for the ability to see the beginning of another week. Father, we 
thank you for your faithfulness toward us, that you have not left us and you've not forsaken us, oh God. Father, as we come before the throne room of grace this morning, God, we are seeking to find that grace and obtain that mercy that we need right now. Father, we ask that as we come before you this morning, lifting up holy hands to you, oh God, that you would search us and you would try us, oh God. If there's anything in us that's not like you, we ask, Father, that you would take it from us, Lord. But we know that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But we thank you today that your grace is sufficient unto us. And Father, as we come before you, we have a repentive heart, oh God. And we thank you for being a God that forgives us and that casts our iniquities into the depths of the sea. We thank you this morning, oh God, that there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because we have been made free from the law of sin and death. We thank you this morning that we find life in Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning, oh God, that you have given us, Lord God, everything that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you this morning, oh God, that we can open up our mouths and we can give you glory. We thank you this morning, oh God, that you have not rewarded us according to our iniquities, but you have rewarded us according to righteousness. We thank you this morning that we can call on your name and we know, God, that you hear us and you answer us and you show us great and mighty things that we don't know. We thank you this morning, oh God, that you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords, that you are Alpha and Omega and that there is none besides you. Father, as we come before the throne room, as we continue to press in your presence today, we ask, oh God, that you would show us your glory. We ask today that you would open up the eyes of our understanding. We ask today that you would enlighten us in the things of you, that we might not know the hope of glory God, that we might know the calling to which we have been called, that we might know the very will of you. Father, we ask right now that you would inundate and that you would invade our atmospheres, no matter where we are, God, all around the world. We open up ourselves to you and we say, have your way, master. We ask that you would sit on us, that you would rest on us, oh God, that you would make yourself known this morning. Father, we need you like we've never needed you before, even as the deer pants at after the water, so our soul thirsts after you, O oh God. And so we open ourselves up, God, as we have decreed and declared that this is going to be a water walking week. We decree and declare right now, Father, that we will get into the ship, that we will position ourselves this week, O oh God, to do what it is that you have called us to do. We come against the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus, and we cast it out, and we cast it aside right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that where fear once dwelt, that now, God, our faith is abounding even the more. We decree and declare that we have faith even, even the size of a grain of a mustard seed, oh God. And we understand that with that faith, God, that we can move mountains. We decree and declare that every mountain must be moved in the name of Jesus. No matter what the mountain looks like, no matter where it originates, we decree and declare that it must, it must move at the sound of the word of God. And as we speak the word this morning, as we stand on the word this morning, as we we decree and declare the word this morning. We say that there is no weapon that would ever be formed that will ever prosper in Jesus' name. We thank you that every weapon that would even try to attack our bodies, the weapon, oh God, of sickness and disease. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of infirmity. We come against every, oh God, thing that the enemy would unleash, oh God. God, we continue to pull down strongholds in the name of Jesus. We continue to speak even to COVID-19, and we decree and declare that it will not come nigh our dwelling place. We decree and declare even those that it has attacked, that now their healing has has begun in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that by Jesus stripes, that healing is taking place right now in bodies all over this world, oh God. We decree and declare that the enemy of our souls who has come in to steal, kill, and destroy, that he must cease and desist right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that bodies are being quickened all over the world and that health is coming speedily in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now 
our Father, that you are greater than any disease, that you are greater than any sickness, that you are greater than any infirmity, O oh God. And we decree and declare, Father, that as we send your word, that healing is taking place, Father, and you are delivering the people of God from destruction. Father, we decree and declare that there's no weapon, O oh God, that would come to attack even finances this week. We decree and declare supernatural, O oh God, financial increase in the name of Jesus. We come against every weapon, O oh God, that the enemy, O oh God, will launch against finances. And we decree and declare that we're operating under an open heaven and that there are blessings being poured out even now upon the lives of the people of God. And we decree and declare that there will be unexpected supernatural financial miracles that are manifested this week, O oh God, that the people of God will not be kept back or deterred from walking on water because of lack of financial, oh God, increase. We decree and declare, Father, that you are bringing it from the north and the south and the east and the west. We decree and declare the favor of God over the people of God today as they got positioned themselves to give you a yes. I thank you right now, Father, that there is nothing missing and nothing broken in the lives of the people of God and they are able to prosper on every end. We bind up the spirit of poverty right now. We break the back of poverty in the name of Jesus and we decree and declare that we are children of the Most High God, that we are King's kids. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that we are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We are blessed coming and we are blessed going. We decree and declare that there is no good thing that our Father would keep from us and we say right now in the name of Jesus that we have more than enough because we serve a God who is more than enough. We call on you Jehovah Jireh right now in the name of Jesus and we thank you that every spiritual blessing in heavenly places is being released on the lives of the people of God. We thank you right now, God, that that place of drop and that place, oh God, of stagnancy and that place of lack, oh God, that it is being inundated and saturated with the spirit of God, the power of God, the presence of God, the provision of God. We decree and declare that be released right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that we will not be held back. We will not be stopped. We will not be stagnated in this hour. We decree and declare that every resource that we need is being made available to us right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, God, that we will walk upright and circumspectly before your Father, not looking to the left or to the right. We decree and declare supernatural focus in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare right now, Father, that those who have been taken off track, those who have been distracted, we decree and declare supernatural alignment right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, Father, that we have the mind of Christ and we're able to think on those things that are lovely and just and pure and honest. Those things that have a good report. Those things that are pure, God. Those things that are aligned with your word, Father. Those things, oh God, that are aligned with your promises, God. And we decree and declare that all of your promises are yes and in you. Amen, God. We thank Thank you, Father, that you are not a man that you should lie or said a man that you should repent. If you have spoken, God, you will surely bring it to pass. And so we thank you right now, Father, that there is no fear and there is no doubt and there is no hesitation, Lord, that as we hear you say, come, as you bid us to step out of the boat, as you bid us to walk on water, we thank you, Lord, that we will be obedient to the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that the blessings of you will come upon us and overtake us, oh God. We thank you, Father, that in this hour that you are even releasing blessings, God, that make us rich and addeth no sorrow. We thank you, God, that this is the moment and the hour of the people of faith. We thank you, God, that even though the enemy may come one way, he has to flee seven ways in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning, God, that you are greater and that you have lifted us up, oh God and seated us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We understand who we are. We understand whose we are, oh God. And we cloak ourselves, Father, in your righteousness today. And we decree and declare that there is nothing that 
we cannot do. We decree and declare that there is nothing that is too hard for us. We decree and we declare this morning that there shall be a performance of those things which have been spoken to us by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we ask even the more, oh God, that as we proceed in this week, that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak to us and continue to instruct us and continue to direct us and continue to order our steps in your word. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our atmosphere. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our homes. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our places of employment. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our places of business. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our places of ministry. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our relationships. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into every decision that we have to make this week. We help, We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into every engagement that we engage in this week. And we will look for you. And we will listen for you. And we will follow you. Hallelujah. But we know that you lead us into all truths. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that we will not be stopped, we will not be blocked, we will not be hindered this week, but we'll run forward, we'll run forth in the name of Jesus. We thank you for giving us power, oh God to tread upon serpents and to tread upon scorpions and to tread upon all the power of the evil one. We decree and declare out of our mouths today that there is nothing that will stop us. Hallelujah. There is nothing that will harm us. There is nothing that will hurt us, oh God, as we keep our minds stayed on you, as we keep our eyes on you, oh God, not turning to the left or to the right. We decree and declare that even in this week, oh God, that every crooked path will be made straight in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare in this week, oh God, that every desert place will be watered in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for open doors of opportunity. We thank you, God, that your favor will put us at the front of the line and at the top of the list, oh God. We decree and declare that our gift will make room for us even in this week, oh God, as we stand in the apostles how in the authority of you, as we remember who we are in you, as we remember that you have crowned us with loving kindness, and you have crowned us with your tender mercies, oh God, and you have given us dominion over the works of your hands, Father. We decree and declare that we will operate in our authority this week, oh God, and we will go for the mountain. We will have the, the testimony of Joshua and Caleb. We decree and declare release of that spirit, oh God, that says that we will take the mountain that says that we will eat the giants for breakfast. We decree and declare, Father, that everything that we put our hands to, that it will turn to gold in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, God, that we will not forfeit our promise in this hour, that we will not get sidetracked, that we will not get distracted, oh God, but we will go for what it is that you have shown us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. And we thank you right now that God, that as your presence comes into our life this morning, oh God, we thank you that every, every occurrence of chaos, every occurrence of confusion has to stop right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that Jehovah Shalom is being released in our lives right now in the name of Jesus, that Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace is coming into our homes and coming into our marriages and coming into the presence of our children. That Jehovah Shalom has gone before us. That the God of peace is resting on us and resting in us. And we thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, God, that is keeping our heart and our mind in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are greater. You are greater than anything that could come against us. You are greater, Father, than any challenge. You are greater, oh God, than anything that the enemy could try to present, oh God. You are greater, and we put our eyes on you, oh God. We put our eyes on you. We keep our eyes on you, Father, and we ask, Lord, that you would enlighten us, God, even in this week. Enlighten us, Father, and show us which way to go. Show us which way to go, because we have decreed and we have said boldly today that we are water walkers and this is going to be a water walking week and father we decree and declare that we'll get in the boat we decree and declare God that we will bind and put our foot on the neck of fear we decree and declare God if we have to step out of the boat alone like Peter did we'll step out of the boat God we decree and declare that we will not panic in the middle oh God of whatever storms might show up and and we decree and declare, oh God, that we will keep our eyes stayed on you. Hallelujah. We will keep our eyes stayed on you. And in the instance, oh God, that we feel ourselves sinking, that we will immediately call on your name. And even as you say, Peter, we know that you will be there for us, oh God. We know that you are not a respecter person. The same thing that you did for him, you will do for us, oh God. And we decree and declare, Father, that there will be an immediate response, Lord. We decree and declare that you have assigned angels to watch over us. That you have given us angels to take charge over us. That you have given us angels who will hold us up in their arms, oh God. Your angels who excel in strength, Father. We thank you that they are with us and they have gone before us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. And we give you glory, Father. And we give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some glory this morning. Give God some praise this morning. Go on and thank him. Give him a prophetic praise, even as you have decreed it out of your mouth. Listen, the enemy wanted to stop some of you all this morning. He wanted you to wake up and be discouraged and, and be despondent. But let me tell you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you're going to walk on that thing that thought it was going to consume you. You're going to walk on that issue that thought it was going to drown you. You're going to walk on that circumstance that thought it was going to take you out. The strength of God be released to you right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost be stirred on the inside of you right now in the name of Jesus. Us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that this will be a water walking week in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And even as we pray on Monday mornings, we know we always take a moment to sit in silence and to hear what the Lord would say. Listen, we can, we have to get out of this thing where we run in and out of prayer and we don't posture ourselves to hear from God. Good morning, Apostle Maureen. I love you. Good to see you on. We got to get to the place where we settle ourselves in the presence of God and we listen for his voice. And so we're going to take just a, just a minute here just to be silent in the presence of God. And hear what it is that he would speak to us this morning. Hallelujah.
Amen, 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 amen. Listen, as you were sitting in the silence, and some of you may you may need to sit in silence, you know, even after we get off this broadcast for a few minutes. What we tend to do is rush into prayer and rush out of the prayer. And, and prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. If we will posture ourselves to hear from God. And so it's a good practice that when you pray, have some time and have a space where you can just sit silent in the presence of God. Many times we, we have so much background noise that we never give God a chance to speak back to us. And so we always do this when we do our Monday morning prayer. And so if you're on Facebook Live and you heard something, um, as we sat in silence, I want you to share that. Just write it, type it. It'll be a blessing to someone else. And for those of, of you who are on the conference line, you know, I always unmute the conference line to see if any of my lady, ladies have anything to say. So if there's anybody on the conference line that wants to share, feel free. Yes, who's this? Who is it? Okay, you're gonna have to talk really loud. Yeah, I know it's it's Della. Uh huh. Amen. That you're equipped. Amen. 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 That's it. That's it. And so you guys may not have heard, um, um, cause I have the conference line on as well, but Della's word for us this morning is that we're equipped. There is an assignment that she thought she couldn't do, but during prayer, the Lord told her that she can do it, that she can do it. And so that's for somebody else that's on this morning too. You can do it. Amen. Thank you, Della. Thank you, Hallelujah. Anyone else on the prayer line? Amen. There's a lot of words that are being shared on Facebook. I love you, Elder Mamie. Love you so much, sis. Thanks for coming on. Um, Lloyd, Lloyd, a, right here, she write, writes, I continue to hear about walking in new garments and shoes. Listen to that, Della. She says, and she's on Facebook. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can, yeah. okay, you see it too. Good. Confirmation. It's confirmation. Absolutely. It's confirmation. Whatever position we have decreed and are about to feel, start dressing, walking, and talking, and behaving like it intentionally. I love it. Good morning, precious Elvington. So glad that you're on. Um, Tina says, the word, the word you give me, Father, to speak, command an immediate response. An immediate response. So we are to immediately respond to the word of the Lord. Valencia says, draw nigh unto me, and I lift you up. Amen. Amen. Aisha says, keep going. I am walking with you. I haven't lost the battle. Sweet victory. Sweet victory for somebody this week. I'll take it. Sweet victory for me this week. Hallelujah. Aisha, thank you for sharing that word. Thank you guys for coming on and sharing this morning and being a part of Monday morning manna and prayer. We come on at 5 a.m. every morning, and we try to go to about 5 to about 6, and we've hit the 6 o'clock hour, so I'm not going to keep you guys much longer, but thank you for coming on. Please, if you are on for the first time, God bless you. I see Precious is on for the first time. Thank you for being here. Uh, please make sure that you like the Kimberly Jones Global page because this is where I'll be doing most of my broadcasting from here on out. And I want you guys to be on and uh, able to get the notifications as we are broadcasting from 
um, this particular page. God bless you. Um, more words coming through to y'all. Monica says, um, she heard the Lord say, I have all sufficiency. Amen. Um, Beverly says, God is more than enough in every area of our lives. I thank God. I thank God for um, the word of the Lord this morning. And Nadia, so glad you were on. Thank you for coming on. You're a first timer. Thank you for coming on. We're on um, on every Monday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from Monday morning, Manna. And then we're on throughout the week at different times. Make sure you've liked the page so you can get uh, the notifications when we go live. So listen, we've decreed and declared. Can we do it one more time? Can we decree it one more time? On the conference line and on Facebook Live, this is a water walking week and I am a water walker. You guys decree that one more time. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming on and we'll see you throughout the week, but we'll definitely see you next Monday at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Monday Morning Manna. Blessings to you.